quantum tunneling is responsible for many important phenomena such as the alpha decay of atomic nuclei and the operation of certain types of diodes. Yet quantum tunneling is completely contrary to our intuition about how the universe is supposed to work. This is because quantum tunneling has absolutely no analogy in classical physics. To understand quantum tunneling, we must understand that particles don't have a defined position until they're observed. Instead, all particles are described by what we call a wave function. The probability of a particle being observed at a particular location is given by the square of the amplitude of the wave function at that location. In this example, the red sphere represents the most probable location where we'll observe the particle, because this is where the amplitude is greatest. Suppose that the particle bounces off a barrier, where the energy of the barrier is greater than the energy of the particle. This is represented by the wave function reflecting at the boundary. Let's take a look at how the wave function behaves inside the barrier. As the distance into the barrier increases, the amplitude of the wave function decreases exponentially. But the wave function doesn't actually reach an amplitude of zero. Now, let's consider a new scenario where the barrier is shorter in length. As before, the amplitude of the wave function will decay inside the barrier. But since the wave function doesn't reach an amplitude of zero, the wave function can exit the barrier on the other side. Once the wave function exits the barrier, its amplitude no longer decays. A portion of the wave function passes through each of the two boundaries. And a portion of the wave function also reflects at each of the two boundaries. This means that there is a certain probability that the particle will pass through the barrier to the other side and a certain probability that the particle will bounce off the barrier. If we send a number of these particles towards the barrier, some of them will pass through and some of them will bounce off. If we send a number of these particles towards the barrier, some of them will pass through and some of them will bounce off. Now let's consider yet another scenario where the barrier's length is even shorter. In this case, the wave function doesn't have as much distance to decay inside the barrier and we therefore have a larger amplitude for the portion of the wave function that exits the barrier. This means that with this shorter barrier, the particle has a greater probability of passing through. It also means that the particle has a lower probability of bouncing off the barrier which is represented by a smaller amplitude for the reflected wave.
as we increase the length of the barrier, the particle is less likely to pass through and more likely to bounce off. But even if the probability of each individual particle passing through a barrier is small, with a large number of particles, there is a high probability that at least some of them will pass through. From the perspective of classical physics, if the energy of the barrier is greater than the energy of the incoming particles, then there is no possibility that any of the particles will make it past the boundary. But from the perspective of quantum mechanics, it is a very different world, and hence we have what we call quantum tunneling.